Now, of course, today's Father's Day, and I'm going to be preaching on this subject of the importance of a father. We live in a day today where children are, are increasingly growing up in split homes, and that's become to be a normal thing in this society. And it's wicked, and it's terrible. And we, all the more reason why we need a sermon on the importance of a father. There's so many children that are growing up with single parents, and usually the single parents are the mother. Now, obviously, the mother is extremely important. We need the mothers, but we also need the fathers. And we're going to go through a lot of scripture today and go over a lot of the, the importance of the role of the father because the mother and the father have different roles. And the first role I want to point out, and probably the most important role of the father is the teaching and the instruction that the father is able to give to the son or to the child. The father is the head of the household according to God. He is scripturally given that authority as the person in charge of everything regarding the family. Ultimately, everything boils down to the responsibility of the father. The wife, the mother, has a lot of jobs that she has to do herself, but ultimately the ruling and the, and the, and the structure of the house is all going to go down up to the father. So even if the mother's not doing her job correctly, it's up to the father's job to make sure that everything is being done the way that it ought to be done. He is the overseer of the family. Now, we started off in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is, is well known as a, as a book of great wisdom, as a book of instruction. But what I want to point out to you, and we're going to see this, we're going to start go, jumping through all these different chapters. We started off in chapter number two. Look at what it says in verse number one. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. He starts off saying, my son. These, are, these next, however, I don't even know how many chapters start off all the same, saying, my son, my son, my son. The book of Proverbs, in the beginning, it's, you know, most of them were, were written down or penned down by Solomon. And he's speaking to his son. He's trying to impart wisdom unto his son. Yes, this is the word of God. Yes, this is for all of us. But what I want to point out is over and over again, how many times it's teaching his son, teaching someone that's growing up, teaching someone that truth. That is the, probably the most important thing a father can do in their child's life is to teach them and to instruct them the right way. As the head of the household, not only is the father the head and the ruler, but he's also in charge for the spiritual upbringing of his family. The father needs to be the spiritual leader of the household. Unfortunately, we have a lot of dads today that, that want to be good buddies and they're not necessarily parents to their children. I'm going to get into that a little bit later when it comes to discipline. But there's so much more to raising your children than just one for just one, just even meeting out discipline. But the other one is um, it's not just about fun and games. It's not just about having fun. You, we need to be constantly teaching our children on a daily basis. But, but don't skip past this. Look at, he says, if thou wilt receive my words, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, he's trying to get him to receive his own, very, his very own words and hide my commandments with him. He's giving him commandments. He's giving him structure. He's giving him rules that he needs to follow for his own benefit. In verse 5 it says, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Ultimately, he's giving these commandments, he's giving them these words, he's trying to get him to understand the fear of the Lord. He's like, if you listen to what I'm telling you, if you can obey my commandments, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God because he's teaching them from God's word, because he's teaching them godly wis wisdom, not just the desires of his own heart. Jump over to chapter 3, look at verse number 1. Verse number 1 reads, My son, forget not my law. Again, my son. He's speaking to his son. It's my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life 
and peace shall they add to thee. Most people today, most fathers will, will look at their children and say, yeah, of course you love them and you want what's best for them. Right? And that's what he's saying here. Look, I want you to have length of days. I want you to live to a good old age. I want you to have long life. I want you to have peace. I don't want you to have a lot of troubles and trials and go through all kinds of, of bad things in your life. He says, if you don't forget my law, if you keep my commandments. Now look, this is what a good father needs to be teaching their children. He needs to be teaching them the right way. As we read in chapter 2, as you go on, and even just throughout the book of Proverbs, you see so many life instances, so many, you know, relevant, you could call it, teachings and wisdom of regarding, you know, the strange woman going in and, and spending time with a promiscuous woman or a harlot, you know, and, and the destruction that it's going to bring to your life, the destruction that alcohol is going to bring to your life, all of these wicked sins, all of these instructions are taught in the book of Proverbs. And it's taught as a father to his son. You need to understand this. I want you to have a good life. I want you to live a long life. I want you to be at peace. I want the best for you. But in order for you to have it the best in life, you need to listen to my commandments. You need to listen to my instructions. This is the Father's job. It's extremely important. Let's keep reading. It says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, in verse 3 of Proverbs 3. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. The importance of of the truths that are taught by the Father surpass all other knowledge because he ought to be teaching them the words of God and the instructions from the Bible. Now, I do firmly believe, you know, we homeschool our children and I believe that the mother has a very important role as well as far as the teaching and training and the upbringing of the children and the day-to-day -day things while the father's out working. The mother's going to be, you know, raising and rearing up the children and teaching them many ways. And yes, the mother should be teaching the Bible too. But we see, point blank, from these chapters, we see from the book of Proverbs, the father has an extremely important role in that teaching as well. Fathers, don't just leave all the teaching up to the, to the mothers, to your wives, to be doing this teaching. You need to be doing, taking the instruction upon yourself as the spiritual leader of the house to teach these important commandments. And you know what? The children need to hear it from both mom and dad. You can't have a lopsided relationship where the kids then can choose, well, am I going to listen to mom or am I going to listen to dad? No, you both need to be in agreement on this and teaching the same things. And the father is ultimately responsible for making sure that the right things are being taught in the house. The magnitude, I mean, you can see the language that's being used about how important the instruction is for the life of the children. It literally will make or break their lives. Flip over to chapter 4. Verse number 1. We, can't, we cannot overlook how, how these all start out, how all these chapters start out. We we'll oftentimes get a lot of great wisdom from the, book of, from the book of Proverbs. But look at how each chapter starts off. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law. The father ought to be teaching doctrine from the Bible unto the children. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Children, the important teaching that your father has for you to learn, you need to keep this. You need to do whatever it is that, that you need to do in order to keep these words in your heart, not to forget them, not to forsake them, not to, to just ignore them. Your father loves you and wants you to know these important truths from the Bible so that you can have the best life that you possibly can have on this earth and even beyond this earth 
in heaven after your salvation. Look at Proverbs chapter 5, verse number 1 reads, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Chapter 6, verse 1, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Proverbs 7, verse 1, My son, Keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. Over and over again through all these chapters, we see the admonition and the teaching. And you could read all those chapters and see all the wisdom. Fathers, and you need to be doing this. Fathers, learn the book of Proverbs. Learn all this wisdom that is being taught from a father to a son so that you understand you are responsible for teaching these great truths unto your son so they don't grow up to be a drunk, so they don't grow up to be a fornicator or an adulterer, so they don't grow up to be a thief. All of those truths are taught in the book of Proverbs, among others. This is wisdom that your children need to hear that will impact their entire life. I cannot stress that enough. Turn, if you would, to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. You see people oftentimes these days that have disdain for their children. And it's sad and it, and it kind of disgusts me a little bit to see that. They have children that, that are growing up to be monsters and they don't understand why. They have children that don't obey them and they don't understand why. They have all these problems and they're all coming and stemming from their children and they don't understand why. It's because they're not spending enough time with them or they're not teaching them the things that they ought to teach them. Instead, they're probably wasting their time in front of the television or going out to movies or however they, they, they get their entertainment putting their face in front of a, of a little handheld device and just gluing their eyes to it instead of spending the time with their children that they need. Your children need to be instructed. Look at how important the instruction is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 4. Verse number 4 reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Not here and there, not sporadically, not bring them to church and just let, let the Sunday school teacher teach your children and then go back home again. That's not what the Bible says. He says, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Diligently, with a lot of carefulness, with a lot of time, with a lot of effort and planning and preparation. You need to be teaching your children. And look at this, he says, And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. So when you're sitting down in the house, instruct your children on the ways of the Bible. Be diligent about it. When you're walking by the way, when you go out for a walk, when you're traveling somewhere, when you get in the car and go somewhere, talk about God's commandment to your children. And when thou liest down, when you're getting ready for bed, and when thou risest up, when you get up in the morning, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. The words of the Lord bring life. The commandments are good. It's a way that we need to be living our life to have the best possible life that we can. This is how important these words are. We need to be diligent. And fathers, it is your job to make sure that your children have good doctrine. It is your job to make sure your children have good instruction and good knowledge. And that you are treating God's word with the, such importance that you're talking about it all the time. You're talking about it when you're at home. You're talking about it when you're make, taking a trip. You're putting it on the doors of your house. You're putting it on the walls of your house. God's word ought to be a huge part of your life. You say, that sounds crazy. You sound like a fanatic. Look, this is what the Bible says. This isn't something that's just for the pastors. This isn't something that's just for deacons. This isn't something just for a nut, you know, religious zealot or nut job. This is something that God is trying to let us know the extreme importance of his word and the extreme importance that a father has in order to teach their children. 
The teaching and the training of the child is one of the father's most important roles that he has. It is a tremendous responsibility. You think about the outcome of your children's lives. You are directly influencing and impacting how your children will grow up and the type of people they will turn out to be as they get older. You have a lot of power and a lot of responsibility in the way that your children are raised. Don't take it lightly. It's not a joke. It's easy to have children. It's easy to, to have a paternity test and your DNA comes back as being the, the father of those children. But being a real father is a lot of work. And it's a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of effort. And it's going to consume a lot of your time. But it's extremely important. We see all this teaching and training going on from God's Word. So fathers, how are you going to be able to teach your children the importance, the instructions, all this great wisdom that the Bible's teaching if you're ignorant of the Scripture yourself? One of the best things you can do if you're not a father yet, or even if you are a father, is get your nose in the book, in the Word of God, and learn the Scripture so that you can teach them to your children. You say, oh, my children are older. Look, there's never too late to start learning, but the earlier you can do it, the better. Obviously, if, you haven't, if, you haven't, if you're not even married yet, learn God's Word. You plan on having children, make sure you know God's Word and you're able to teach them sound doctrine from the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. Turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Because as the father, yes, you have to teach your children, but you know what? As the father, you also need to teach your wife. As the spiritual household, you need to be the one that everybody in the family can turn to when they have a question about what's right and what's wrong. About what does the Bible say about this, Dad? You are the go-to person. You say, well, my wife knows more Bible than I do. Then shame on you. Get your nose in the Bible and learn more than her. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You know, praise the Lord if your wife knows a lot of Bible. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. The wife ought to learn as much scripture as she can as well. We all need to learn the Bible. But specifically for the husband, specifically for the father, you ought to be excelling everybody else in your family. Because you are in that position and you are in that job of a teacher and an instructor as well as a father. 1 Corinthians 14, look at verse 34. The Bible reads, God's holy word reads, Let your women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Look at this next verse. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, I don't see how anybody can read these verses and come up with anything other than what it actually says. This is not popular today. This is not popular with the, the feminazi movement that's been going on. And people say, oh, well, why can't women speak in the church? Look, because that's what the Bible says. Because this is the holy word of God. And it even says, look at what it says in verse 36. What came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? Verse number 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. People say, oh yeah, Paul was just, the Apostle Paul was a misogynist. He, he didn't like women. He had this, this male chauvinism. Look, it's the words of God. He clearly writes it out right here. This isn't just his opinion. This is, these are the commandments of the Lord. That if, if the woman's going to learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. So husbands... The Bible's telling your wife that if she's going to learn anything at church, she needs to be asking you about it. How are you going to be able to teach her? How are you going to help, be able to help your wife learn if you don't know it yourself, if you don't know the Scripture? 
It's an important job. You need to make sure you understand this book. We're going through the book of Genesis on our Wednesday night um, Bible studies. And I, I mentioned this in, in chapter 18 when we went over it, but we're going to look at it again. Because Abraham was such a great man. He was a great father. He was a great leader of his household. Abraham was a very good example for us to follow as, as fathers because he received such a high compliment from the Lord in chapter 18. Uh, start reading in verse number 17. The Bible reads, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? This is when he was sending the angels to Sodom. And he met with Abraham just, ju excuse me, just before entering into Sodom. And he's questioning whether or not he should tell Abraham about it. Stop that right now. Verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, speaking about Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. He's like, I know Abraham. I know the type of man he is. I know that he loves the Lord and I know that he is going to teach his children. I know that he's going to teach his household. He's going to not only teach them, he's going to command them and say, look, you need to follow the Lord. This is what you need to do. And they're going to grow up understanding the truths and the righteousness, and they're going to do justice and judgment because they know the way of the Lord. We need a lot more Abrahams as fathers today. Instead of these deadbeat dads who get a woman pregnant and then they just want to forget about the responsibility that they have with their child. The responsibility that the Bible's laid out as a father that you need to have to your child. Flip back, if you would, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 22. Children need to be taught the truth from their dad. We've seen that clearly. It's been evidence in all the scriptures that we've looked at. I turn if you go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is why Abraham, God knew Abraham was going to teach his, his household and he was going to train them in the right way and that they were going to grow up and do justice and judgment because he was training them in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they're not, they won't depart from it. The things that you teach your children early on have a big impact on the, the rest of their life. Proverbs 13, verse 24 reads, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Discipline is extremely important in the upbringing and the teaching of a child. The words themselves are very important. We need the words of God. But oftentimes with children, they don't understand that there's consequences associated with their actions. And unfortunately, the only way that they can learn, I don't even want to say unfortunately, just the way it is. The only way that the children, the chi a child is going to learn the, the uh, impact of the consequences of their actions is by giving them the appropriate discipline they need when they break the rules. And that is of a, of a spanking. That makes you sit up straight, doesn't it? Even just hearing that word. It ought to. Because when you do things that are contrary to God's laws, when you do things that are contrary to your parents' laws, they have rules in place for your well-being. So that when you grow up, you could be a good person, an honest person, someone who's going to be very, just very good and godly and doing the things that are right. But when you, when you break those rules, you need to understand that you can't just go about breaking all of God's rules and nothing's going to happen. There is a punishment. And it doesn't feel good. It stings. But it's a reminder so that you could listen up the next time and listen a little bit closer and, and be able to remember and, and to get it into your head that, wait, no, I can't be doing this because bad things will happen. And the greater truths that we teach you, we don't want you to have to go off and experience that for yourself so then you receive a spanking from God or discipline from God. 
the, the little bit of physical pain that they receive as a young child is nothing compared to the pain that they could receive forever, especially if they, they don't understand the consequence for sin in general and they don't get saved. One of the best things that you can do for the salvation of your child is to spank your child. Make sure they know from a young age that there is a painful consequence, a result of their sins, of their transgressions of the law. Because that is exactly the way that God operates. That's why the Bible says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. If you're not disciplining your child appropriately, if you're not spanking your child appropriately, the Bible says you hate them. But he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Now, I've preached quite a bit on disciplining children in the past, and I've heard quite a few sermons about it, and it is extremely important. But it's not the only thing. Like I said, I think the most important thing still is the instruction of God's Word. Excuse me, without the instruction, how would they ever even know that they're doing anything wrong to receive a discipline? They need to have the instruction first. They need to have that. And then they need to be, it needs to be properly followed through with the appropriate discipline. But don't take this too far to the extreme with the discipline either, where you forget about mercy. Discipline is extremely important. I will never back down from that. However, that doesn't mean you have to be a drill sergeant to your child. It doesn't mean that you are completely emotionless and that, you can, and that you are just black and white every single day and that you do not extend some level of grace and some level of mercy when they do wrong. Because let's face it, kids do wrong quite a bit. You cannot constantly be coming down on them with an iron fist all the time for the smallest infractions. We need to remember the, and follow the best examples that we have from our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father will discipline us when we do wrong, when we screw up, when we get out of the way. He will discipline us. And the worse our sin, the more He'll discipline us and the harder He'll discipline us. But let's not forget the mercy and the kindness and the long-suffering that He shows as well. The Bible says in Luke 3.36, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. This is something as a parent, as a father, especially because fathers are often looked to as a disciplinarian. Now, it shouldn't just be the fathers. The mothers and fathers both have that same role. However, I don't think it's right for either parent to always be pushing the children. You're like the mom saying, oh, dad needs to give you a spanking. Dad's going to give you a spanking. Dad, dad's not the only source of the discipline. The mother's job is also a source of, of, of being able to correct the child, especially with the amount of time that the mother spends with the child. You better believe that the mother ought to be disciplining those children, probably even more so than the father. But fathers, don't just say, well, that's just the mother's role. That's just my wife's job, because it's not. As a father, you need to have consistency. You need to be able to maintain a level of, of doing things the same over and over again. Your children need to understand that they need to be able to believe the things that you say when they look at you and you are consistently giving them punishment. When you're consistently doing things, they know where you stand and they know what's going to happen when they, when they break the rules, when you are consistent. But you also have to have love. Again, you can't be so hard and such a cold-hearted machine with your children because that's not, that's not the way to properly do it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He's saying, you know, your job isn't just to be being so hard that you're, you're just provoking your children to wrath. You're just making them angry. You're just provoking them and stirring them up so that they're just getting angry all the time. And that you're, you're, you're teasing them and messing with them and just, and just disciplining them so often that you're just provoking them under wrath. They need to be brought up. They need to be taught and trained in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 2 Verse 10 tells us, 
ye are witnesses. And God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe, as ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you. Look at this, as a father doth his children. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's talking to him saying, look, you are witnesses. You know how holy we were, how justly we behaved, you know, all the good things we did, how we, how we um, behaved ourselves when we were with you. He said, you know how we acted. But he says, and you also know how we exhorted. When you're exhorting someone, you're giving them hope, you're helping them, you're comforting them. He says, Exhor exhorted and comforted and charged Every one of you, as a father doth his children. You, say, you know, well, another job of the father should be, you know, you ought to be exhorting your children. You know, letting them know they're doing a good job. Comforting them. Letting them know you're there for them. Helping them through their hard times. Making, making yourself someone that they can rely on. Someone that they can trust in. Someone that they can turn to when they're having problems and they need your comfort. They need your help. You can exhort them. You can keep pushing them along the way and just tell them they're doing a good job. You know, and, and, and helping them to get their confidence and to stay um, with, their, with their thoughts and with their, with their hearts right with God. And not only do they exhort and comfort, but they charge. Charge is you're giving instructions. You're telling them what they need to do. You're giving them their charges. Can you please take her out? Children learn from watching you. You don't even realize, those that don't have children don't realize this. You don't realize until you have children how much your children will be watching you and observing the things that you do. They watch you very closely. They watch you when you don't realize it. The, the, the slip-ups that you make, your own sins that come out from time to time, your children pick up on that. Your children will pick up on everything that you do, which is why you must live a life of integrity. You must live the life that you're not just saying the things, but you're doing them also. Make sure that your walk matches your talk. Because your children are going to learn a lot more by your actions if they don't line up with your words. They're going to learn, hey, dad's a hypocrite. And they're going to have no respect under the teaching that you are trying to instill in them. Even if it's the right teaching, if you're not doing it, if you're not following it yourself, they're going to give it no, no heed. They're not going to listen to the things that you have to say when you don't do the things. They're going to say, well, why should I do them? Dad's not even doing them. You need to have that expectancy. How can you expect a certain type of behavior from your children when you yourself are not doing the same exact thing that you expect of them? <clears throat> Turn, if you would, to John. John chapter 5. We're almost done with the sermon. It's a shorter sermon this morning. John chapter 5. We're going to see some, some of the words of Jesus where he's talking about his father and himself. And we could, we could learn from these couple of references a little bit more about us and the importance that we have with our children, um, even on this world. John 5, 17 reads, But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. So here we see a father that works. Very hard. And his son saying, you know what? My dad works and I'm working too. Don't be lazy, dads. You want your children to grow up to be hard workers? You can't be lazy. You can't be laying on the couch and, and just eating a bunch of junk food and, and just you know sitting around doing nothing. You ought to be working. You ought to be working very hard and showing and setting that example for your children to follow. Verse 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Keep that in mind. Because this is a great truth. The things that your children see you doing, they'll do the same things. So if that's good works, hey, great. Praise the Lord. They'll do those things too. But if they're sins, watch out. 
If you've got a lot of wickedness in your life, watch out. Because they see those things and they're going to do them too. It says in verse 20, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Sons, or fathers, teach your sons, teach your children, teach them the things that you do. There's so many, there's so many parents that, that want to do everything for their children, and I understand that. Believe me, I do, with children of my own. I understand how much you want to do for your children, but don't get so hung up in doing everything for your children that you're not teaching them how to do the things that they're going to need to do when they grow up. Give them that instruction that they need. Let them help you. Let, you know, show them. Take the time. I know it's going to take a little bit longer to do the tasks that you wanted to do when you have to sit there and show your child how to do them. But again, no one ever said that raising, easy, raising children is going to be easy. It's not an easy job. It's a hard job, especially if you want to do it right. And you may be a great worker in, in everything else. Take the time to show your children. Take the time to show them the things that they need to learn so that they can do the things that you're doing. Flip over, if you would, to John chapter 8. The last place we'll turn, John chapter 8. John 8, verse 37 reads, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. The impact a father makes on their children is tremendous. Don't ever forget that. Your children watch the things that you do. They see the things that you do. You hear over and over in that phrase, you know, he's his father's son. That means he's doing the same things that he was taught from his father. What type of father are you? What type of example are you giving to your children? How much scripture do you know? Do you know doctrine? If your wife were to come to you and ask you a question after church and say, honey, I didn't understand what he was talking about when he said this, would you be able to give an answer? How about your children? Are you teaching them? The words of wisdom from the book of the Bible, I, from the books of the Bible, are you, are you giving them the instruction that they're going to need so that they don't fall in to the traps that are all over the place, that Satan is laying everywhere for people to fall into? Instruct them on those traps. Don't let them fall in. You know, too many of us learn, have to learn by experience. I know I've been one. I've learned by experience, but you know, I'd rather would have just learned from God's Word. I'd rather have just learned these things, not the hard way, the easy way. Fathers, spend the time necessary. Convey the uttermost importance of these words as Solomon was trying to do in the book of Proverbs. We can see the language he used, and he wasn't just blowing things out of proportion. Things really are that serious. And the wisdom that we learn from God is that important. The Father has the position that God has given the absolute most authority to within the household. You better make sure as a father that you are a wise ruler of your house that you have wisdom yourself, that you have God's knowledge. You have a lot of responsibilities. There's a lot that you are responsible for as turning out right, whether it's your children's well-being, your wife's well-being, your whole family. It lays on the shoulders of the Father. Make sure that you are being the example and the teacher that you need to be. Inspire our eyes have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words. God, we need, we need good fathers. 
We need way more good fathers this day, dear Lord. It's one of the reasons why our country is just morally decaying. Lord, there's not enough good fathers that are teaching and instructing their household and teaching their wives and teaching their children, dear Lord, the way that they need to go and the way is to follow you, dear God. We need more strong men that will stand up and that will do these things so that their children can grow up to be godly people. So that we can have more people following you and not just a bunch of hypocrites that say they claim they believe the Bible, but they're not doing anything. They're not teaching people. They're not teaching even their own family. And most of them are just ignorant themselves, Lord. I pray that you would please stir up some spirits with this message. I pray that you would please just help fathers to get on track and to do what's right, dear Lord, and to ultimately to stop thinking about themselves and think about their family. In order to be a good father, you have to be humble and putting the cares and the needs of your, of your wife and family at the, at the top. You need, you need to be thinking and focusing about them and what's going to be good for them and what is going to be the best for them is learning God's word. Lord, I pray that you would please strengthen the fathers, exhort them as our father, dear Lord. I pray that you would please exhort us and comfort us, dear Lord, and, um, and teach us and instruct us your ways and give us the charges. You've already given us the charges. We, ha we have our orders. Lord, help us to understand them better. Help us to be strengthened in our faith as fathers, dear Lord, that we can be um, pleasing in the role that you've given unto us, dear Lord. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.